This video will show you how to rank number one on Google, and I've only shown like a close-knit friend group in forums this strategy so far. So this is the first time the public's seeing it. I hope you enjoy it. It's gonna help you use AI-assisted procedures to rank higher on Google. Let's go. Now to begin, check this out. Claude, super powerful. I like Claude more and more. TXT file, what is all this information? What the heck are we doing here, right? I'm gonna get into this, but I wanna be very clear. Every tool has a different purpose. So check this out. This is auto blogging, this is manual blogging, and there's a schism, there's some sort of disconnect between the two. Auto blogging, what is auto blogging? This is when you give a tool keywords and it spits out a million articles like that and you don't have to touch it. That's the most passive way to do blogging nowadays. Do I think it's viable long-term? No. I don't. Do I think it's very interesting? Yes, I do. And manual blogging is when, say, at the highest forms, you are going to hire or you are an expert in the field and you are manually typing on the keyboard, creating blog posts. Now, coming back to Claude, we're going to do something interesting here. Very, very interesting. I wasn't sure. Listen, I wasn't sure if I was going to show anyone this because this is what I'm using right now and it's working on Google. I told you I'd show you how to do this. But based on the attached article, the most expensive watch in the world is this one priced at 55 million, wonderful. We're gonna ask it a few more things, but what the heck are we doing here? We have all this information with the headers at the bottom. What the heck are we doing? And how do we even get this stuff? So let's go to the top, let me show you. Let's go here, boom, this is an internal tool, but I'll show you how you can do it manually. So what we do is the world's most expensive watches ever. It pulls the top three SERPs. It does micro semantic type of stuff with entities and frequencies. We don't need to talk about that right now, but that's micro semantics. I love that type of stuff. But what you can do is you type your uh, keyword, whatever you want to rank for into Google, and then just control click on the top three SERPs. Not hard. Here they are right here. And then what you can do is copy and paste all the words into a TXT as well as the headers. We can use tools such as SEO meta in one click. And look, it has all the stuff right here. So basically what I want to do is create a mega article based upon my competitors. I want to talk about everything they're talking about and more. So how are we going to do that? But let's pump the brakes for a second. Let's pump the brakes. Listen to me. Why are we doing it this way for this particular type of article? The reason is these listicle articles often have prices, numbers associated with them. If you were to type in Grandmaster, this type of watch into any LLM, it's gonna probably, it's probably going to hallucinate and give you some bogus numbers. But if we seed the LLM, that's what we're doing. We're seeding LLMs with information that we know to be accurate because we are using inspiration from the top computer competitors, then we can create our own article, our own spin on it using an LLM plus accurate data. So coming back to Claude, I just love this. I love it. Here's the list of every watch mentioned. So I asked it, give me every watch from most expensive to least expensive. And here we go. We know that there was 25. Listen, there's 25 different watches in the one article. There's a couple in the other, a couple in the other. So we should have like 30 or something. So let's ask it. We always have to check it. How many watches did you list? All right. Here we go, let's see what it says, because we have to double check. LLMs, they still hallucinate in different ways. These numbers will be accurate here. Like I've double checked it, triple checked it, but sometimes they omit things. So you have to double, triple check certain things when you work with LLMs. And as luck would have it, I asked it, how many watches did you list? I listed 25 and we already know that's not good. Aren't there more in the TXT I provided? They're like, oh, you're right. And it gave us more. And I double checked their work. There's 31 watches it listed from most expensive to least expensive. Now we have to ask ourselves, what are we gonna do with this data? But before we do this, look, 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 look. Provide a list most expensive to least expensive. I just have the headers and boom, it gives us 33 different ones. That's a problem. Why is it a problem? Here's the thing, ChatGPT is better at that part of the process than Claude ever is. Claude gave us like 30 items, all right? ChatGPT, just based upon the headers, was able to extract 33, which is the real number. And guess what? They did a great job at it, too. They organized it really, really well. So what we often do is use ChatGPT to extract like numbers, lists, data, and then we can push it back to Claude to actually write some information on. Now, look here, look here, look here. This is very, very crude program. And if evergreen, then use Word Galaxy else, use Claude or ChatGPT. What the heck does this mean? It means if it's evergreen content, things that an LLM would know, like LLMs would know everything about Germany locations and tourist attractions, right? That doesn't change often. If that's the case, then I'm going to use Word Galaxy. But if it's changing things that is dependent upon data that is up to date, then I extract from SERPs and do what I'm going to show you next. 
So let's take the introduction Claude worked up for us. Let's push it to text razor. Let's push it here based on the attached article. Well, obviously we can't have that. So the most expensive watch in the world is this. It's priced at that. I like that. Why do I like that? Because it answers the query. The most expensive watches in the world. You come onto the article and it says, well, the most expensive watch in the world is this. Now, what we're going to do is click the analyze button. Let's just see what text razor does. So it's going to show us entities and things like this based upon Wikipedia um, data sets. What is it called? The knowledge graph. Nonetheless, I'm looking for problems. I'm looking for problems. The most expensive watch in the world is this. And it says hallucination is based upon this Wikipedia entry. Maybe I'm just curious if we were to edit the text and do quote, you know, the uh, what do you call them? Someone in the comments tell me what this thing is called. The thing with the. The parentheses, I got it, perfect. Uh, hallucination, so it's still gonna push it here. I'm just testing right now. Bottom line is, when you have an introduction to an article, it needs to be really, really on point. How you answer the query matters, and how you can go about testing whether or not, ooh, this could be good or not, is something like Text Razor. We used to have Google's NLP, the salience score. I think they got rid of that by now. But nonetheless, moving on to the next step, we need to look at our competitors. How the heck are they talking about their watches, right? All right, the graphs, diamonds, hallucination, they have a big old paragraph we can do better like it they link out to an internal link is that internal internal link diamonds cool paragraph okay paragraph what was the other one uh boom boom they don't talk about them that much right it's not bulleted points it's not like palatable information these are just listicles and as things become more competitive online because of ai people are going to have to step up their games on listicles step up their game i'm not saying that a new website can compete against this off the bat but i am saying as time goes on listicles and articles will become bigger more comprehensive and users we have to build it for users helpful content now of course i'm going back to chat gpt i want to have an article look 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 i want to have an article detail on these watches what would be some good bullet points to include in the article for each watch to be helpful all right and for the user to understand more about the watch at a glance uh price and auction details historical significance key features materials and craftsmanship the point is none of the art other articles are given a breakdown on this stuff now we need to look here what is viable for what we have the information we have right so let's do this i'm just curious i'm just curious um let's Ooh, look at that they're going on and on and on with it but let's just grab 10 of them here let's come over to claude and i'm going to say talk about the graph diamonds um hallucination right hallucination and give an intro then give info in bullet points on this stuff all right let's go let's just see what it does so this is the testing phase because we test we test we test and then we refine 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 and then i push it off in the form of a sop a standard operating procedure to people on our team because you can replicate this anyone can do this they need to have attention to detail but look at this look at that pretty darn good if i was someone reading this article i'd be pretty stoked on this wouldn't you wouldn't you so long as it's accurate and, and it's probably accurate why because it's referencing the txt that we uploaded that's pretty darn cool so what we can have is a header a headline a header an h2 header we have the header picture block of text bullet points rinse and repeat and all of a sudden you're going to have this beautiful mega article on the 33 best most expensive watches but wait we're not done there remember remember this right here the if else statement we just did this else use claude use ChatGPT. but if it's evergreen remember what i said like places in germany that's an evergreen topic and that's exactly what we did and here's all the headers i'll show you what we did we typed into google the best places to visit in germany and then we have these different results here's 18 of them well great here's 14 of them and here's however many of them and what we did is we asked chat gpt right here um basically create a list again 33 of them and then we pushed them to word galaxy and i have three instances of word galaxy up because if you push too many headers into the custom article workflow it will time out because it's a piece of software so i did like 11 each and then boom it gave us some boom it gave us some and what i basically did was i have now just like that for about a dollar and fifty cents 33 best places to visit in Germany in winter with information about each and every one of them. Put a picture in this article and it's pretty darn good. Now, the competitor that has the top SERP is 18 and we're going to come out the gates with 33. The point is I want more comprehensive listicles, articles, all of it. And how do we do that? We can use AI assisted procedures. So if you like this video, please subscribe. Um, check out the newsletter because that AI tool, that new one coming out, I'm going to give information in the newsletter. So do that. I have a masterclass and um, yeah, I appreciate you. See you on the next one.